I'm in Top Gun or something. Goose. This is no good, Goose. This is no good. I can't find my buddy, Goose. Where do you go? This is Jim here. I'm the big dog at uh, Discovery Divers Tokyo, a Patty Naoi instructor. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, today's topic is dry suit. This video is about the long relationship I've had with dry suit. You're going to hear some stories about the likabilities and the dislikabilities. If you are already a dry suit user, you're going to totally be shaking your head yes through a lot of this video, I suspect. But first, before I get started, let me just say we're trying to build our presence. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel at this time, the way you could do that is to hit like, uh, subscribe, share. You know what it's like feeding the algorithm, man. It's like feeding the monkey. And she's got to feed the monkey. I, I mean, uh... My history with the dry suit started almost 20 years ago, maybe, something like that. I was all alone. I was here in, in Japan. I was, I was relatively new to the Kanto area, the Tokyo area. I didn't know many divers at all. I certainly didn't know any instructors that, that spoke my language. Um, all my instruction for dry suit was from scuba board online. Uh, so my, my first dive was a total disaster. Everything had to go up from there. Because of that, it took me like 150 or 200 dives to even like dry suit diving. That, that's how poorly I started out. Because... So the first dive, I was at Osazaki, and it was actually near typhoon conditions. It was, the rain was sideways. And I'm diving with some people I didn't know. I knew them from online. And they said, oh yeah, you know, we're gonna dive Osazaki. They're all wet, I'm gonna try the dry suit. A DUI, TLS 350, bought used on eBay. With those soft boots, those soft neoprene boots, latex seals. Uh, so we head out, we go out and immediately, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, trimming the seal, whatever. Immediately my, my neck seal is, is too, too loose. I'm, I'm taking on water. You know, the visibility is terrible. I'm with like five other people, very difficult to even see them. It's waves, it's shore entry, just miserable, miserable. Near the end of the dive, you know, we're coming in and we, we cross this other group and I'm swimming and, you know, the guy who, who's, who's leading us, you know, he, he's going kind of fast and, you know, I'm, I'm going, following this guy and he's going shallow. He's not going to the exit I thought we were gonna exit from, but I'm following him, you know, I'm, and, then, and then that dive leader, he, he, he stops in about six meters of water and he, he kneels all of, all of us down on the bottom. He makes us kneel. And I'm kneeling down. I'm like, all right. And then the, this dive leader is going down the line with, with divers on their knees. And he's having them do drills. And I'm like, wow, this guy's really old school review the skills kind of guy. He gets to me. And I look in that face. And I'm like, uh oh, this is not the droid I was looking for. Man. This, is, this is not the guy I came in with. Right? It, it, in that mix, I, I, I peeled off and I was in the wrong buddy group and, and I got into an open water class and I was with the instructor. So I looked at him like, hey, you're not my deal. He looked at me like, you're not my student. What the heck is going on here? So uh, yeah, I, I went off on the beach and there they all were waiting for me. Terrible first experience. I didn't, I didn't have, my equipment wasn't right. My instruction wasn't right. Uh, you know, probably the conditions, it was a stupid thing for a first time. Terrible, everything was worse. and. Probably. So leakages, uh, of course, you could have like a leak, like you know something went through the suit, or but a very common leak. It's not really a leak like through your suit. It's more like a leak at the seal. So um, years back, uh, seals used to be made of, of latex very often. Yep. Uh, but latex had had two problems. One, uh, it was damaged by ozone, so it had a shelf life. It was not very long lived. Also, people could have allergy to it. I had a slight allergy to latex actually. Uh, after a weekend, I would have bands of, of, of red irritation. Nowadays, there's silicone instead of latex, and silicone, hyperallergenic, uh, you don't have to cut it as much, it's much more flexible, not susceptible to ozone degradation. Uh, also, there are neoprene seals, very often with neoprene suits. The seals, uh, if you're doing a lot of hand work, working with a reel or uh, SMB, something like that, moving your wrist, your wrist can, can make channels like this that maybe the seal doesn't form on this so well, and you'll get bleak, bleak, bleak. Little leaks every time you're doing, every time you're using the reel, every time you launch an SMB, bleak, bleak, bleak. Very annoying. Sometimes the end of a weekend, your whole your whole arm, uh, forearm can be can be wet. The wrist leaking, I totally solve that problem now by wearing dry gloves. Right, I have dry gloves that pop on, and oh, they're one of the greatest things in the world. Uh, right, that also happens with your neck. So with the neck, two problems. One, you know, if you're turning your head you're making channels on the side, um, or, or if your suit is kind of puffed up and if you go vertical and look up, sometimes you'll get this big air dump, this big burp of air out of there with a burp of water down the bottom, not pleasant. But 
This side to side thing is especially annoying because it very often happens looking for a buddy. So when I'm wearing my dry suit, and if it, the water is really cold, I'm very sensitive about a buddy who's not right there in position. I want to look there, not turn my head, just just turn my head, my eyes a little bit, see my buddy. Okay, we're good to go. If my buddy is like way back here, or I'm looking for my buddy, I'm really angry because every time I turn my head, break, 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 get these little shots of cold water down my chest. Very annoying. It's it's almost like you know my my buddy's like like a bogey back there. You know I'm like I'm like I'm in Top Gun or something. Goose, this is no good. Goose, this is no good. I can't find my buddy, Goose. You gotta help me out, Goose. Where is Goose? Talk to me, Goose. Help me out here, Goose. Goose, do you see him back there, Goose? Every time I look, Goose, I'm getting a shot of cold water down my neck. It's killing me. I got him. I got him. He's on our tail. Coming on. I can't see my neck. Goose, where is he, Goose? Talk to me, Goose. Go back there. Closing in on him. Closing fast. This is really bad, man. I'm taking on a lot of water here, man. Goose, help me out. You get the picture. Anytime, but especially if I'm in a dry suit. If you're my buddy, you should be back there like those bad boys. Wingman, bam. I look, you're there. No searching around, no leaking in my neck. But other places that are like kind of unusual, like so the crotch area. So, so there, there are three or four reasons why you could feel wet in a dry suit. One, you could be sweating. If it's hot out, you're working, you, you could be sweating. It, you know, you sweat. You could be sweating. Uh, well, it could be a leak, could be a leak. Uh, you could be feeling condensation. So. The sweat, your sweat could be against your body making you wet, or your sweat could migrate through your exposure, like through your undergarment, and then hit the cold wall of your shell suit or your neoprene. Neoprene, not as much, but hit that cold wall and then condense into liquid. And that liquid builds up, especially places where you're pushing against the suit. Uh, so for me, like actually my, my inflator button here, I feel that sometimes, my knees, elbows, my crotch, <laughs> I don't know why the crotch. But there's another reason why the crotch could be wet, and this is not a good reason at all. So if you have a pee system, a urine system, and we'll talk about that in a little while, but if you have that, um, then you, if you have a malfunction or leak in that system, yeah, you're gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna be happy. Uh, but some people, here, here, here's a great example, and this has happened to be true. I was teaching these two fellas uh, it was around Christmas time, actually. We were in dry suits. It was Osazaki. And I was teaching these two guys. And, uh, you know, they're coming along very, very motivated guys. And uh, I said, hey, listen, you know, if you want to study uh, open water during this time of year, you're going to have to be in a dry suit. And it's going to take an extra dive or two uh, to get used to that because that's a whole other skill. Are you okay for that? And it's challenging. They're, yeah, we're okay. I was like, wow. Nice job, guys. So we're at Osazaki. We're using rental dry suits. And rental dry suits, I got to say it, they just usually suck. We did our first our first dive with the dry suit. And uh, we come out. And you know, I'm in my beautiful dry as a bone, fantastic suit. I forget. It was probably a fusion back then or something. I asked him. I, both the guys said, hey, how was it? The, the, the more dominant one, he comes over and says, man, that was a lot drier than I thought. Takes his suit off, pours like two liters of water out of his boot. Out of the leg of, of his dry suit. And he's, and he's happy. This is more dry than I thought. Cause he, so that's what I'm talking about. Comparison, everything's relative. To me, that's a catastrophic failure. And for him, very little experience. He was comparing it to the wetsuit in the pool. He's thinking, wow, a wetsuit is 100% wet. This is like 80% dry. It worked, you know? One of the things about dry suit is it, it can be tough to know when to use. And that's part of the love-hate, actually. For, for me here, um, in the, the beginning of the season, May, June, the air starts to get really warm. I get lots of people calling me, hey, I want to go dive, I want to go dive. You know, it's, it's getting nice and warm out. The thing is, June, the water is still like in the, if you're a Fahrenheit person, it's in the 60s at depth. And if you're a metric person, it's like, you know, it's like 15, 16 degrees at depth. It's not fun so and then june july is really tough because then on the beach you're sweating and the water still at depth it could be like 16 17 degrees so it's really tough um that that could be a very tough thing about dry suit is like kind of deciding you know am i going to be comfortable in the water or out of the water there's this beginning of the season and end of the season dynamic so right now i've got these aqualung the fusion suit they're they're gorgeous but in my early days you know always um use suits or inexpensive suits and it was always the same pattern the first dive of the season is like nirvana. I mean, 
just, you know, you're, you're in heaven, you're on that plane. And then every dive after that, you know, you, you get successively more leaks. And here is a very, very tough environment for, for dry suits because we've got a lot of lava rock and a lot of shore entries and a lot of unsteady entries with, with rocks in there. So you're hitting your knees, you're in your elbows, your butt. Uh, your boots. Now I use over boots, which are very tough. But so toward the end of the season, you know, you start off this, you know, beautiful, dry, young, snappy suit, and then progressively, right, life is taking its toll on your suit, and you're springing leaks here, and and by the end, you're just like limping along with this soggy, uncomfortable suit, and then you just send it to the manufacturer, um, and then at the beginning of the of the next season, you're like, oh, you know, you start off again. But these. Days let me just say, on, on the positive side, on, on, on the love side, so I, when, when my suit is working well and, you know, it's the right temperature and, you know, I have the right tank and the buoyancy, you know, there, there's, for me, there's nothing like the buoyancy in a dry suit. It took time to get that, that feeling, but, you know, whereas a wetsuit, I feel like I have a center of gravity that's floating somewhere, and then I have to, like, balance my whole body on that center of gravity. A dry suit, every part of me is being lifted, each foot, each leg. Each, my elbow, my everything is being lifted, and you can send air to places to you know make them lift more. So for me, there's nothing like that feeling, man, of of a dry, dry suit. There's nothing more beautiful than that feeling. Alternatively, there's almost nothing worse than the feeling of a leaky suit. You sprung a leak, or God forbid, you you peed in your suit by accident. You know you had a leak. There is almost nothing more miserable than, than that feeling. So, like, okay, well, if, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, please, uh, as I said, you can support the channel by, by liking, subscribing, sharing, feed that monkey for me, and uh, dive safe. See you on the beach next time.